In this lecture, we're going to look at a special kind of method in objects called getters and setters. So let's imagine we have a person object with two properties. First name, we set this to Mosh, and last name, we set this to Hamadani. Now, somewhere in our application, we want to display a person's full name. So we have to do something like this. Console.log. We can either get the person that first name concatenated with space and then last name or a better way as i told you before is to use a template literal so we use the back tick and then we add a couple of arguments here so here's the first one the argument is person dot first name now we have a space and here's the second argument person dot last name however the problem with this approach is that maybe there are multiple places in our application where we want to display someone's full name. With the current implementation, we'll have to repeat this template literal in multiple places. A better approach is to define a method in this object, call it full name, and move this expression right there. And then whenever we want to display a person's full name, we simply call that method. So we can add another key value pair, full name, but we set the value to a function. Or as I told you before, in ES6, we have a shorter syntax to add a method to an object. So instead of adding it as a key value pair, we can add it as a function without the function keyword. So if we want to define a function outside of an object, what do we do? We add function, the name of the function, parentheses, and curly braces. However, when we need to add this inside of an object, we just drop the function keyword. So you can see this new syntax is shorter and cleaner than the older syntax. Okay, so here's our full name method. We simply return this expression here. So I'm going to cut this and move it here. Now with this new implementation, every time we need to display someone's full name, we simply call name. Save the changes, we get Mosh Hamidali. Beautiful. However, there are a couple of problems with this approach. The first problem is that this is read only. In other words, we cannot set a person's full name from the outside. It would be nice if we could do this. And then the first name and last name properties would be automatically set based on what we pass here. The other issue is that I don't like to call this like a method. It would be nicer if we could treat this as a property. So we could drop the parentheses like this. So how do we do this? Well, that's where getters and setters come in the picture. We use getters to access properties in an object and setters to change or mutate them. So in this object, we should add a getter. And with that getter, we can read this person's full name like a property and with the setter, we can set it from the outside. So here is how it works. We prefix this method with the get keyword. And now this method is a getter. So we can access the full name like a property on line 15. Let me temporarily comment out this line. Save the changes. You can see our program is still working. Beautiful. So this is our getter. Now, to be able to set this from the outside, we need to add a setter. A setter is very similar. So we add the set keyword, the name of the property or method, and then code block. However, this method needs a parameter. We can call it value or anything. And the value of this parameter would be what we have on the right side of the assignment operator. So here, let's assume that value is a valid string. We need to split that string by a space, take the parts, and set the first name and last name properties. So value, we call the split method of strings. We want to split it by a space. This will return an array. We can call that parts. Now we can set the first name to parts of zero, a last name to parts of one. And finally, Instead of logging the person's full name, let's just log the person object. So initially, we set the first name and last name to Mosh Hamedani. Now with this new property, which is actually a setter, we're changing the name to John Smith. Save the changes. 
Here's our person object. You can see first name and last name properties are updated. Also, note that full name, its value is dot, dot, dot. Sometimes when you're logging objects in the console, you may see properties with this kind of value. As you can see from the tooltip, this is a getter. In order to read the value, you need to click here. And now this method is executed and the result is returned in the console. So this is the benefit of getters and setters. In the next lecture, we're going to look at error handling. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.